guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is yeah. Alicia, and today I'm going to be sharing with you things that I do to get organized and prepped for a new academic year, a new semester. You could probably even do these things if you're halfway through the semester and you decide you want to get organized and these will mostly be organizational tips. They're mainly systems that I put in place before the semester even starts so that once the content starts coming in, things are just easy to sort and figure out what I need to do. So it makes my life a little bit easier. Before I get into the first tip, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel down below if you like the content and give this video a thumbs up because thumbs are cool. Let's get into the first tip. At the beginning of an academic semester, when I have all my new subjects and I've finally decided what I'm doing, I'll create a new Notion page for each of my subjects before the semester starts. So I'll usually sit down for like an hour and a bit and just set everything up so I don't have to deal with all like the little admin stuff, I'd call it, um, when we're learning the content. Let me share with you my Notion workspace. This is my Notion workspace. If you want to use it, I will leave a template in the description and you can duplicate it into your own Notion workspace and just adjust it to whatever you need for that subject. And along the side here, you can have a favorites tab and a private tab. I don't know why it's called private. Anyway, so these are all the workspaces I have. So these are all the subjects that I've either done or I'm currently doing. And I'll just pin and favorite the ones that I'm currently doing this semester to make it easy and not get jumbled around. But you can rearrange the order of these to however you like. Let me use this one as an example. What I'll do is I'll... I just had an ice cream and burped out mint choc chip. <laughs> so I'm going to show you what I do for one subject and then I basically just do this for the rest of them because if I showed you all four, we'd be here all day. So I've already set this up because I'm actually in week two of the semester, but this is what I did two weeks ago before the semester started. So I went on the uni homepage for this subject. So my uni uses Canvas. What I've done is on my Notion workspace, I have the subject code, the unit code, and then the subject name. And then this is the stuff that's all in my template. I used this last semester and it really worked for me. So that's why I'm using it again. I went to the unit outline. So my uni uses a unit outline, which is kind of like a syllabus. It tells you when all your assessments are, when you're doing what topic, what you're learning about, literally every detail you need to know about that subject course. If you're in high school, for example, like doing the IB, you can do the exact same thing with your course syllabus, which is available online. So any outline that'll sort of give you a rough estimate of when you're doing things, when your assessments are, is really helpful to input into your Notion workspace. So this is the unit outline for this subject. It gives you an overview, if I can scroll properly. Yeah, it tells you when all your assessments are, what type of assessments they are, and they're waiting, which is helpful. This revision schedule, you don't really need to fill in now. You can leave that to later. But this part's kind of what I set up. So under course content, I'll go into here, weekly schedule, and it tells me exactly what I have that week. So the first week I had two lectures and a prac. Second week, two lectures and a prac, and it tells me exactly what those lectures are. So what I've done here is I've put in the weeks on the left-hand corner, corner, left-hand side of the table. And then in the pages, the ones where you can open pages, I've input the class that I have for that week. So week one, I have lecture one, which is on the oral cavity, lecture two, which is on the esophagus and stomach and the introductory prac. And then on my Notion workspace, what I've also done is I've created these topic things. So what each sort of module was about, I filter it by that. So if I need to search for a specific one or a specific prac, then I know it's under that topic. And then I've also put in the class mode. So if it's a lecture or a tutorial or a practical, blah, blah. blah. And then also I've left the space for your slides. So these are your lecture slides. So for example, if I open this, yeah, it'll give me the lecture slides. So these are things you can all input later, but I just set up the titles so I know what to put in there. And then something else I've also done, I'm not really sure if I put this in the template or not, but 
it's super easy to add. All you do is, I put in these check boxes this semester because um, if I just wanna make sure that I've done everything I wanna do for that week, I will tick off. So once I've done my lecture notes, I'll tick that off, done the active recall questions, tick, tick. So this is kind of just like for my own sake, you don't really need to do it. But all you do is add to the table and then your property type, you wanna make that checkbox and then you can type in the title of whatever you want to put in there. So those are more for my reoccurring tasks that I want to make sure I'm doing after each lecture. So that's basically all I do for my Notion workspace. I'll do the same thing for each of my other subjects. So you can see for physiology, I've done the same thing. I've put my lectures in, topic name or like module name, and then the type of class it is. That also really helps because it'll make sure you've covered every single lecture. You've either gone to that lecture or you've watched the lecture throughout the semester. You can fill in your revision schedule with your space repetition and stuff as you get to it. If you want to see the details of all that, I'll link my how I use Notion video and you can watch that in detail. The second thing I do to get myself prepped for a new semester is I will create an assessment schedule. So this here is the assessment tracker that I've created for last semester, you'll see semester one. But basically I've just outlined each week of the semester and then for each subject I've inputted what assessment I have that week and also the due date. I personally find this really helpful to do at the start of a semester just because especially with online university I found there's a lot of resources on the page or like your canvas page. Sometimes things get lost and it can be like easy to miss dates because there's so many pages everywhere and you can't really like find things. Creating an assessment tracker just really helps you to make sure you don't miss any assessments. Another really good thing about creating one is that it'll tell you which weeks you have a lot due. So say for example the assessment tracker I had for semester one, looking at week 11 I had three assessments due, like so three out of my four subjects had an assessment. That means that coming up to week 11 I want to make sure I have all my revision methods or whatever I wanted to do and I've sort of spread things out so that when it comes to week 11, I'm not overwhelmed and swamped by all these tasks that I have to do. Just being mentally aware or sort of like preparing yourself for a very busy week is very useful. It'll help you to plan better and make sure you don't stress as much, which is always a plus. And also like ticking off the assessments in like the little check boxes, also very satisfying. I'll show you how I make it. It's super, super simple. I do it on Word document, but don't need to do anything fancy. Let me show you. I'll create my one for semester two with you right now. I'll leave a template in the description for you to use. You can just download it and copy it. I did a similar thing with an exam revision tracker. And I put it on Google Drive and I keep getting emails about people trying to request. So to sort of solve that problem for everyone, I think if you, oh my God, there's like a massive window. Look at this, the window cleaners are here. <laughs> Before I thought it was raining, um, turns out it was just the window people dripping water. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Yeah, so I'll double check this, but on Google Drive, if you make a copy of my template rather than trying to edit it, that'll be good because otherwise I'll get a bunch of emails saying people are trying to access it or trying to request editing access to it, which I don't think um, I can do because if I let people edit it, then other people will download the template with their writing in it. So if you just duplicate it and make a copy, it should work, but I'll double check that and yeah. Enough talking. So I go into Word document and I'll make the layout landscape just so I can make a table. You know what I'm actually gonna do? Just copy and paste this from last semester because I can't really. So this is how you can use the templates. You can copy and paste the table in and then now I'm just gonna change these subjects to the ones that I'm doing this semester. My semester in coming months only has 12 weeks, so I'm just going to delete this row. So again, you can customize it to whatever fits your current schedule. I have four subjects, so there's four columns, but again, you can adjust it. So if you have like six subjects taking the IB, put one for each 
subject. I might have to make two pages, but just copy and paste the table. I go more by the weeks of the semester rather than the dates because I never keep track of the date usually. I'm more aware of like when week one is, week two is, week three. So that's why I've written that there. But if you want to go by months or dates, then that might be easier for you. But again, customize it to whatever suits your circumstances. So this is literally <laughs> the most basic thing in the world and pretty self-explanatory. So I'll go to my uni outline the one that I showed you before. Here it doesn't really tell me exactly what date it is for some things, but if you don't know specific dates of things, that's fine. You can always add that in later. But just getting a rough idea of what weeks things are in, that's really helpful. I'll go to each subject. So for this anatomy subject, week three, I have a tutorial quiz. So I'll write tutorial quiz. No, nope, theory quiz. You can sort of be as specific as you want to be. I just note down that it's a theory quiz and then later on I can write in my planner or something what topics it's actually on. Usually at the beginning of semester they don't give you like all the information and then I'll write the date. I have it here somewhere so I'm gonna find it. So my theory quiz is on the 8th of September and then all I'll do is just bold the date and then I will input the rest of it according to whatever it says here. So week six, I have theory quiz two, which is on the 29th of September. Bold the date. So with the final exams, I don't put those in here because you don't get given that till like two weeks before your exam. There's like a dedicated exam week for me or at uni at least. So I'll know it somewhere in those two weeks. These are more for just the in-semester assessments. Okay, so the next part about getting resources collated and organized is textbooks. I just wanted to quickly talk about whether you should buy textbooks, whether I found them useful buying them for uni because they are quite expensive. The subjects that I buy textbooks for are ones that I find will be helpful for more than one subject. First year subjects, for example. I bought this chemistry textbook in first year because I thought I was going to major in chemistry, but then I changed it. So I bought the textbook because I was like, oh, sick, I'm going to major in it. I'm going to use it for more than one semester. I was wrong. I changed my major like a thousand times, but basically I didn't need this textbook anymore. And to be quite honest, I didn't actually use it that much. So usually with the textbook, it helps you if you want to read more about it, but usually all the information you need to know will be in the lecturer's slides. Anything you can be assessed on will be in there. It's not like if you don't have the textbook, you're not going to survive that course. Usually you can find an online version as well, either for cheaper or for free. Don't know if I can say that. You'll be able to find it somewhere if you look hard enough. But what I've done is for the subjects I know I'm going to be doing or like something around that in that area for a long time, I bought the textbook for. So for example, I'm doing an anatomy major or well it's anatomy and histology. So I bought this anatomy atlas and I found this actually so helpful. Like it gives you a lot more information than you need to know for the subjects that I've done so far. But I found it really helpful for subjects like anatomy where it's a lot of diagrams and drawings to have the physical textbook. This thing is very heavy, um, so I don't carry it around campus, but just to have it home when I'm studying, like I, what I've done is I had these little sticky notes and I have just like occluded them kind of like an Anki flashcard, um, just covered them up, covered them up to test myself. And also just like this textbook is really nice. There's a lot of very pretty drawings on here. That was helpful and it came with a digital version with this textbook that you can use online. It gives you flashcards and images to look at. Same thing with physiology and histology. I have done like two subjects of each of those now. So I've used the textbook for more than one semester and I've actually found it very helpful to have it because sometimes the textbook explains things quite well. First year subjects, I suggest you don't really need them. Second year subjects, if you are majoring in that area and you know you're gonna be using that textbook for a while, continuing on to third year, then I would suggest you go buy it if you want to. Not everyone likes a textbook. The lecturer's notes are usually sufficient, but it's good as a supplementary source if you wanna look at that. That being said, some subjects, I know for a lot of the math ones, they say you should buy the textbook because you need the questions and if there's extra questions in the textbook 
that they don't give you, then I do suggest maybe buying the online version or seeing if your friend knows someone who has the digital copy because that'll save you a lot of money. So I will have a look through the reading lists of my subjects. Usually it's in the unit outline or it's on the canvas page. It'll tell you their suggested textbooks that you should buy. If I'm gonna buy them, I'll usually wait a couple weeks to see how the first few weeks go. If I need the textbook, if I'm maybe struggling with the content, then I will go scope it out. So that one you can sort of wait on. You don't really need to do right at the beginning. As I said in first year, I made that mistake. So don't need to repeat that. Second last thing is creating your timetable. Same table, same font actually layout as my other assessment calendar, but this is my timetable last semester. So these were all in person. So obviously I've got the location of where they were, what time they were, and it was more strict, I guess, because I had to be at a certain place at a certain time. Select a color for each subject and that's the same color as on my folders just so I, I like associate a color with that subject i don't know if that's like a normal thing to do so a nat 2008 that was blue for me because radiated aqua vibes i don't know <laughs> so i put that subject i just blocked out the times and then wrote what it was what weeks i had it and then where it was because sometimes with uni courses they don't have you don't have the same class every single week it's good just to note down when those classes are and then i've also input other random things that i was doing so like if i had a rehearsal if i had driving lessons stuff like that those are things that just occurred every single week so i put those in other things that were more flexible or maybe were like one-offs then i would put in my diary as that week came so it's good to just have that there i've made it into a one page so you can put it wherever you want. You can make it your background. You can print it out, stick it on your diary, literally do whatever you want with it. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about for prepping for a new semester is organizing your files and your books. I have my Notion workspace, which I set up and showed you at the beginning of the video. And then I have two sort of systems in place. I have my digital organization through Notion and also these folders that I create for each year. And then the other one is my physical folders. So the two things that I will go and get are a display folder and this Muji Brown book. The Muji Brown book, I usually buy new ones per semester because the other ones usually fill up. So I need new ones. And this I just like use as scrap paper, wanna write random notes from tutorials and stuff in here. If I'm doing like active recall as well, I'll write the answers down here. In terms of the display folder, I just reuse these between semesters. So I'll just take out all of whatever I had in here from last semester. So last semester I had all my lecture notes in here, but I just binded them into a book and could reuse this. What I just did was I got a piece of paper and wrote the new subject name and inserted it into the sleeve there. So these are really easy to reuse. I put my lecture notes in here. You don't have to print your digital notes. I just do because I like to buy them later. And then the other organization thing I do is I'll create new folders for each subject. So on my OneDrive, I'll create a semester folder where I will create a single folder for each subject. And then within each of those folders, I'll put a bunch of different things. So like resources, lecture slides, iPad notes, as well as like practical things. So, so I can separate each of my files into their dedicated folders. Taking my anatomy one as an example, you'll see that I label all of my files according to their lecture number, just so it's easy to search for things. Once I've written my notes on my iPad, I will airdrop them to myself and then put them in this dedicated folder here with the same naming system. In the resources folder, I put like the textbooks, any admin or course information about the tutors or timetabling and stuff like that. So that pretty much wraps up this video and is all the organizational stuff I do before the semester starts to get myself prepped and ready. But in terms of the content, I don't really touch that stuff until the semester starts. Some advice that I would give to you is to have a break when you're on break and you're on holidays. 
they're there for a reason it's a good way to mentally prepare yourself but also de-stress before things start to get busy again because from experience things can get busy pretty quickly and you're going to be wishing you were back in a time where you had nothing to do and no responsibility at all so take a break to just rest you don't need to touch the content the semester is made so that you can learn the content within that time frame doing it beforehand is not really going to benefit you like drastically have a break be a blob all day if you want to sleep all day if you really want to do whatever you want and what makes you happy and what makes you feel relaxed and at ease before the semester starts again so with that being said thank you so much for watching and good luck for back to school or uni